Hey, Ryan, we're here in September of 2024. We've been in the new NAR settlement period uh, for a couple of weeks. Kind of what do you see different? What's going on in the marketplace here today? As it relates to the settlement? Sure. Not too many major changes, I would say. I think, of course, we all have to adjust to the changes, but largely what we've seen so far is most of the sellers that we've encountered, both on our end and representing buyers, are willing to cover commission and buyers are for the most part still asking for commissions to be paid by the seller as part of their offer we do include that as part of our offer now the only exception i've seen is when a real estate agent made an offer on a house and they didn't ask for any commission obviously because they'd just be paying themselves so yeah i think I've, we've heard of scenarios where there were seven offers on one of our company's listings and all seven asked for two and a half percent to be paid by the seller and some variety around that. So if I could shorten that answer for us here in Virginia that have had buyer agency for since the late nineties, there's very little change to us that the seller today is paying the buyer's agency directly instead of paying the listing agency and the listing agency pays the buyer's agency. That's all that this lawsuit for people in Virginia, for agents in Virginia has really done. It's required the buyer to sign a agency agreement with any agent before they show any houses. That is the only change on the buyer side that really has manifested itself here in Virginia. You got to remember, this is a national settlement and there were 17 or 18 states that did not have buyer agency. Why they do not, I have no idea, but uh, it seems like they're living, uh, you know, in times that we passed a long time ago. So to us, it's, there's very little change. You have to talk about a few different things with the sellers and the buyers, but that's about it. And we are working just like we really did. So what's going on in our marketplace right now? We just saw some statistics about housing inventory nationwide. Yeah. To rewind for years, the headlines have been low inventory, low inventory and decreasing year over year. Every month this year since April, we've had year-over-year -year increases in inventory. So luckily, inventory has been going up. Now, that doesn't mean there's high inventory. It means we're still at near historic lows. It's just getting a little bit better than it's been compared to last year. So a lot of the economists that track this stuff talk about comparing to where we were in 2019, which they say is you know the last year, full year before COVID. And right now in Virginia, we have like 41, 42% less listings that during the same time in 2019. That's significant. There's some t states that are higher than that. There's only eight states in the U.S. that have higher inventory than then. And we hear about those Florida and Texas and Idaho, if you can believe that. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that's kind of crazy to have 41% fewer listings than a similar time a couple of years ago. It's still a seller's market. So I'll just share the last three kind of scenarios I've come across with sellers and buyers. Like I think our last two listings, we had six offers on one and sold that for 10% over asking price. We had five offers on another, sold that for about six and a half percent over asking price. And then I just helped a buyer get under contract on a new home, beautiful home that had four offers and it went about 6% over asking price. So still low inventory. How are you talking to your clients, the sellers and buyers about how to approach this low inventory market? So we always have to be cognizant of an appraisal. If, if somebody's getting a loan, they're probably getting an appraisal. There's some that can get waived with certain guidelines, but you got to pay attention to the appraisal. So we have to price it relative to the comparables of houses that have sold recently. But I always talk to the seller and the buyer that this might be the fair market value for the house, but there's a premium that a buyer has to pay to get that contract. And I think that's what we're seeing. And they have to have the financial wherewithal to qualify for that and to cover overages if the appraisal came back uh, low. We haven't really had problems with that because we work very hard. We work with the appraisers. We help them do their job. By God, we're never going to tell Very them. rarely do we have an issue. Yeah. And so, you know, we're seeing a number of people that are finally picking up and moving and starting because they know where they want to go. We just had two families actually move from here and go to Texas separately, of course. But, you know, we had to cover some staging, some minor renovations, really got great return on investment for our sellers. 
and we just got a uh, testimony yesterday. So one of our sellers who was having some significant uh, medical issues during this time too, and she really thanked us for protecting her ability to heal and her ability to, to go to doctor's appointments during some minor reservations. But she just wrote us, and the, the short of it is the Damon Sells Homes team is professional, effective, we're kind, thank you so much, we're smart, and we're fun. So, you know, we like to bring a little fun to real estate. Sometimes it's a little too serious and a little too stressful. That's a big part of our job is to help remove the stress from our clients and just make it easy for them. And we were able to do that. Uh, and I just thank her for writing that to us mm -hmm. here this week. Good good five words to, to yeah. describe us, I think. <laughs> All right. Well, can I ask you one or two quick questions? Sure. Just uh, totally random. What's your favorite thing about being in real estate? You've been in it, what, 39 years? So I've been doing this 39 years. And it's really interesting. A lot of people say we sell houses. I don't look at it that way. I say we sell homes because it's, for most people, it's like 99% of them, it's their largest financial asset, but it's all the emotion of home. It's where you raise your kids, have your family, groom your dog, whatever. Your kids go to school, grow up, leave home. It's just a wonderful place that I call home. It's not just a house anymore. So that's been fun. It's always helped wonderful when we help young families, couples, whatever, find their next home. Mm. And uh, uh, that's the way I've always Love looked that. at it. What's your favorite thing about being a grandpa? Seeing the smile on their faces. And I know it's not going to last forever. There'll be tough times, but uh, seeing my grandkids is like my best job ever. I got two kids, five and three, and uh, he's bop bop to them. So thanks, bop bop. Good talk. My pleasure. Similarly, what do you like best about being a dad? I think one of the cool things is learning that I don't just get to mold my kids into whatever I want them to be. Like they are their own person and just learning who they are and what their character is like and the different personalities, you know, how serious or goofy they are. And I think my favorite thing is just seeing them go out in the world and thrive in new situations. And sometimes new situations can be a little scary. Sometimes they really do great and you know, socialize well, and it's just so rewarding to me as a parent. And I just love seeing them. They're both at preschool, but it's a little flock Christian school, so they get to go and they get to worship Jesus and learn about Jesus too. And it's so fun seeing them learn about that and um, learn about what who God is and just become their own little people and with their own interests. Yeah, so that's probably my favorite thing is just learning about who they are. God made each of us wonderfully and beautifully made, right? Mm-hmm. Indeed. Okay, today we're recording this on September 5th, which is the first day of the NFL season. Commanders, I think we won four games last year. We got the rookie, Jaden Daniels, hopefully our franchise savior. We got a new ownership group. What is your forecast for our record this year? My forecast is that they are not my Redskins that I grew up with. It, we've had some years of horrible, horrible ownership, so it's exciting to see a brand new page. And I hope we can get back to the glory days of the 80s and 90s of Redskins when they were fun to watch. They were exciting. They had uh, an impact on the NFL. They've been a non-impact off the field for a lot of years. So it's exciting to see what happens starting this coming Sunday. Go Commanders, baby. I'm sure that name will change, give it a couple of years. Yeah, we just heard that I think 140, 150,000 people have signed a petition to change their name back to the Redskins. Yeah, like that's never going to happen. Like we need that's that. never going to happen. Yeah. But I think they're going to change to something cooler. Commanders, I think, is just bland. Who cares? Until their play on the field is better. Who cares what yeah. they call and we, we'll stop talking about the team name once they have a winning season. Right. All right. Great. Right. Thanks Thank for tuning you. in. Talk to you soon.